yesterday or tomorrow but today give us today our daily bread this is the day the Lord has made yesterday is history tomorrow is a mystery today is a gift and that's why we call it the present but darling, if you're going to do that, you're going to have to do a battle with a great enemy. Time. Time's a fascinating thing. You can't buy it, you can't mortgage it, you can't rent it, you can't save it. People say to me, I saved an hour. Oh, really? Where did you put it? You can save money, you can put money under the bed, but you can only spend time. And all the surveys in the Western world show people want more time. The only problem is, everybody has all the time there is. Tonight in a penthouse in Manhattan, a multi-billionaire will die surrounded by doctors, lawyers, hospital consultants. At exactly the same time, a beggar will die alone in the streets of Calcutta. Those two men only had one thing the same the whole of their lives. At one second past midnight, a big bag of minutes was delivered to the foot of each man's bed. And 24 hours later, at one second to midnight, each man's bag was empty. No amount of money, power, prestige could buy one more minute. Darling, it truly is the greatest asset. Now, I want you to work hard. I want you to be successful. But as you get older, I want you to understand the power of time. And make sure, my darling, you invest in relationships. Brian Dyson used to be the CEO of Coca-Cola Enterprises. And Dyson said this. He said, when we're young, we juggle five balls. Work, family, health friends and what he called spirit but he said when we're young we juggle them as though they're all made of the same material but they're not some are made of rubber if you drop the work ball it may bounce back not always but it may he said some of them are made of glass they don't bounce too well we'd be wise to take more care of those you know darling the bible says number your days that you may get a heart of wisdom did you know that using Google could be dangerous? Well, I went in Google the other day to find out the fifth press in the United States, and I popped a little box, would you like to know the year you're going to die? Well, how could you resist this? I said yes. It sent me a questionnaire, 30 questions, took me an hour to fill it in. And finally a little box flashes at me. Calculate. <laughs> I, 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 I hit the button, and then it flashes at me. It's working out how long I've got left. Finally, it shows me a number. Oh, darling, Pops has so many years left. And so few. You no, know, darling, I, I'm not much of a computer geek. I still like those old diaries. You can only get me charity shops. Now, look, I've got one over there. They're in paper and they use a pen. Do you remember those things? I, I, I like them. They've got little squares in them and the month and the date, little boxes and... And every day I am pulled from one box into another. August 19 comes along and it pulls me through a door into its box. And along comes August 20 and says, he's mine now, and, and pulls me through a door into its box. And darling, so I go on through my life. There is for me a box that has no doors. So then I'm going to die. No amount of money, power, prestige can offer that day at all. Darling, I believe the greatest philosophical question in the universe is this. Does that box have no doors because it's just a coffin and that is the end? Or does it have no doors because it has no walls? And it's the beginning. Darling, as we end our time in the study now, that gives me the chance to tell my favorite story in the whole world. Yes, sir. It's a little boy whose parents owned one of the very first telephones. He lived on the plane. He said, he said, I was nine years old when they delivered it, a big wooden box, and my mum would wind it up and she would say, information, please. And the boys would say, this is information. And information, please, would tell them the weather or get them a number or even tell them the time. And one day he said, my mum and dad were out and I banged my thumb with a hammer. And there's no point crying because there was nobody in. And then I remembered the telephone. And I got a stool and I stood on it and I wandered up and I said, information please. And the voice said, this is information. And I said, I banged my thumb. And the information please said, is your mummy in? No. Is your daddy in? No. Is it bleeding? No.
Could you get to the ice box? Yes. Hold some ice against it. He said it worked. He said after that I rang information please for anything. Information please helped with my job to be homework. She told me in Philadelphia. Information please taught me to spell disappear. And when my pet canary died, I cried and said, why would God make anything that can sing so beautifully and let it die? Information please said, Paul, you must always remember there were other worlds singing. And then my parents moved to New York City and I was out of her area. And anyway, I didn't believe information, please, could live in this new plastic phone. And I never rang her again. So I was 24 years old. And I flew into my old town and I'm in the airport lounge and I look at the phone and think, I wonder. And I dial and I say, information, please. And the voice says, this is information. And I say, could you teach me to spell disappear? And she said, I expect that thumb is better by now. And I said, have you any idea what you meant to me? Should have any idea what you meant to me? We couldn't have children of all. I still love it when you run. No, no, I'm Sally. You remember that, don't you? But I'm not very well. Only come in a couple of hours a week. But if you're in my area, please ring me. And I promised I would, and I used to, and we would often play. And one day I rang. And I said, information, please. And a different voice said, this is information. And I said, could I speak to Sally? And the lady said, oh, sir, I'm so sorry. Sally died a couple of weeks ago, and she was very ill. She only came in occasion. Oh, I'm sorry to come to Norway. Is your name Paul? Oh, yes, it is. Well, Paul. Sally said, if you happen to ring, we must be sure to give you this message. Paul, you must always remember. There are other rules to sing. Darling, I want you to be successful. But I want you to walk through life with your eyes a little higher. I could always know their lives, Jesus said, in my father's house are many rooms. The world saw would have told you. He wants to lift their eyes a little higher. And darling, that won't answer all your pain. Don't let people, even religious people, give you easy answers to your pain. But it will explain some. And it will bring you hope. And it is real. Now give pops. A kiss. The problem with writing books is how to finish them. And I wrote the Wisdom House book and I wasn't sure how to finish it. And then I came across some words which apparently hung on the wall of Mother Teresa's office. And I finished the book with these words. As I finish my short time with you now with the same words. People are often unreasonable, irrational and self-centered. Forgive them anyway. If you are kind, people may accuse you of selfish, ulterior motives. Be kind anyway. If you are successful, you will win some unfaithful friends and some genuine enemies. Succeed anyway. If you are honest and sincere, people may deceive you. Be honest and sincere anyway. What you spend years creating, others could destroy overnight. Create anyway. If you find serenity and happiness, some may be jealous. Be happy anyway. The good you do today will often be forgotten. Do good anyway. Give the best you have and it will never be enough. Give your best anyway. In the final analysis, it is between you and God. It never was between you and them. Anyway. There you go. Right, brother. Amen.